Yeah. I am I am like a um, recovering heroin addict when it comes to desserts, which is uh, as someone who's got about two days uh, sobriety. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be all right. But uh, somebody sent me, for instance, a case of Tasty Cakes. <laughs> Do you know what Tasty Cakes are? Those are those little... Right, they're, they're like ho hostess type cakes, right? Yeah, they're like yeah. hostess, but like they're, cinnamon rolls, they're from Philadelphia. They're sort of cinnamon rolls. No, they make uh, they make a, a, a oh, bunch of that. different varieties, just like uh, Hostess or Dolly Madison. They originate in Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, my dad being from Philadelphia, me going back and forth to Philly when I was a kid, always heard about Tasty Cakes. It was always very exciting, and it was to the point where my dad would load up a suitcase of Tasty Cakes and fly back with him because you couldn't get them out here but they're quite a bit better oh boy uh ups uh, case of them i don't even know who sent them to me really yeah how bizarre i would make a horrible uh, king or czar or um a ruler of some banana republic uh, someone drops off a bucket of food in front of the house you just eat it i start eating it <laughs> like you know like a pig when it gets out of the stall uh. you know people would say to me hey look at these tasty cakes uh, where'd these come from i don't know <laughs> Gee. Well, what are you doing eating them? What do you mean? <laughs> They're here. They're free. What are you talking about? <laughs> Somebody, uh, I read the box. Uh, there's a name on it. I uh, had no idea. And someone said, well, you must have talked about it on the radio. No, and I thought, no, nope, I never did talk about Tasty Cakes. But uh, I ate about, uh, oof. then another guy brought me over a couple of pies. Oh, boy. And I lived uh, solely off uh, Tasty Cake and pie. Oh, boy. My diet was like, it was like I was driving a uh, hostess truck and it broke down the on desert. some highway in the yeah. desert. And I just lived off of uh, nothing but uh, snowballs and chonka dials uh, for a week until a, 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 until a rescue plane found me. That was basically my life. I got up and ate Tasty Cakes and then I went to Pine for uh, lunch and dinner. I was sick for two weeks. Yeah. It was the only thing worse than what you went through is I was sick. You all right? Well, what yeah, I, what, really, actually, like 85, 90%. It's still, I mean, this thing that's going around here, I'll tell you what, uh, 10 days ago I told some people, because uh, I was having to work, I was still having to take care of my patients during this time, and it got so intense with people getting these pneumonias that I just, I kept saying, listen, you're going to read about this in the paper. I don't know about the rest of the country, but Southern California is just being decimated. You, I can't, I've got two or three people I've been trying to get in the hospital for two days. You can't find a hospital bed. Really? Yeah. And you, you can't send them to the emergency room because well, they're below the bed, the but it's, it's just not in the hospital. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I didn't mean to stifle you through with a bad joke. <laughs> but, you know, I'm interested in moving on. Yeah. All right. So uh, I am um, I worked out. I'm getting back in shape. All right. And uh, that's it. Forgot to make a New Year's resolution. All right. Did you make one? Uh, survive uh, the next year. Don't give me this uh, sappy spend more time with the kids because, you know, your wife's listening. Crap. Yeah. Oh, we have oh, the big gift yes, prize. Yes. <laughs> yes. Drew was telling me uh, about five minutes ago off the air that uh, he made a huge relationship faux pas, which is he let the triplets open the presents on Christmas morning and let the wife sleep in and not be thinking, there. Thinking that that's what she was instructing me to do, because she'd been up with one of the kids vomiting all night, and I was we were all sick. Right. And I thought, well, I'll just make it nice, get everything done for her, and... Uh, Mm -hmm. I, I, I told Ann the story, and Ann goes, oh, 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 is she okay? Is that, she survived this? Is that, oh, I can feel that. It's terrible. Yeah. And, and completely, I'm expecting an Part empathic ear. It's malicious personality, by the way. But, okay. yeah, but uh, as a female, she could attest uh, to that. She just abs off. Is she, are, you, are you okay in there, Ann? Yeah, you? I mean, I, if Doug let the dogs open up their presents without me, I'd be Okay, pissed. all right. Okay. Right. This it's is the maternal thing. part of the fundamental differences between men and, and it really women. is. And Drew, you try to explain this all the time, and where women are very confused about how men act in relationships and vice versa. People basically act not only in relationships but just in life how they perceive they would want to be treated or how they like it. Like Drew, I know Drew was thinking, I would love to sleep in and miss this whole fiasco. I'm sick. What a treat it would be if Susan would get up, yeah. deal with the whole mess and the screaming and clean up the papers and I would come sashaying out in my house coat and slippers about 10.45 a.m. Yeah. and have a cup of coffee waiting for me. Yes. Watching the kids all quiet at play with the toys that they'd open some hours early. Yes, absolutely. That'd be a dream for you. Yep. Right. Yep. So you she, then, by the way, she can't accept that. You then project that 
Oh, I just assume. On to her. Yeah, just assume it. She says, oh, please take care of it. And I, I assume, well, I'll, I'll take care of it. Okay. All right. But are you out of the doghouse? Yeah, yeah, because I, because I, th there are lots of interesting sort of psychological reasons that I miss it, too. And uh, I, I agree with her, and I don't, then, but I'm not fighting about it. I agree with her, and I, well, I'll do better. I would not hold not being woken up against anybody for <laughs> anything unless there was an actual fire in the house. And even then, I'd be mixed. Probably grumpy initially, and after a few hours when the fire department came by and I was out in the street with a blanket over me and that kind of thing, I'd probably then forgive them later on in the day. Is this just from a nap, actually, from a night of sleep? Nap, any yeah. kind of sleep. Okay. Right. But um, if uh, if someone was if the wife was giving birth, if it was an anniversary, hell, even a wedding, and I got to sleep through it, I would uh, consider that a coup. All right, Drew. Well, further proof that uh, women uh, do not think rationally. Rachel. Hi. You're 18. What's going on? Okay. First of all, I have to say that, Adam, you're really cool. And Dr. Drew, mm -hmm. I'm pre-med and I want to be a doctor. And hey. you're, like, really cool role model. Great. Congratulations. Good luck. It's a long road. Yeah, I know. I figure I'll just or go and stumble and fall. And no, no, no. Like no, it. no. You know what? Uh, if, you, if, you, if it's really something you got to do, you'll do it. Yeah. Just keep that focus. And so yeah, I actually like chemistry, so Good. I don't know. Maybe orgo will not be as hard as her no. does. What's orgo? Organic chemistry. <laughs> oh, boy. Depends where you're going to school, too. All these, uh, all these like, you know, poli-sci uh -huh. and stuff like that. It does not make sense to us uh, non-college goers. Those, oh, those kinds of terms? Yeah, poli-sci, to me, I always thought was some sort of, um, I didn't know it was political science. I always figured poli-sci was, I know you work with fertilizer or something. <laughs> Poly to me always means chemical. It's not short. It's it's not uh, like polymer. Yeah, like polymer. Yeah. Like uh, I think it means many or something like that. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. So anyway, um, this is <laughs> we got to get call. back in our groove here. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Rachel, okay. go. I'm All sorry. Right. Okay, my problem is, um, I started going out with this guy in college at the beginning of this year, and. Um, about a month into the relationship, I sort of got the feeling, and, and he ended up telling me that he was bisexual. And then about two months later, at, like two months after we started going out, um, he told me that he had been thinking a lot, and he realized that he wasn't bi. He was just totally gay. Mm -hmm. And so we broke up. Okay. And so the problem is, is that, number one, I'm with him, like, all the time because we're still really good friends, and he's my debate partner. Oh, boy. And... But I can't get over this. What do you guys, uh, what do you mean your debate partner? We are on the uh, debate team at my college. Mm -hmm. So we, um, debate teams are made up of, of two people each. And so. Uh -huh. You can't get over it because you haven't had a chance to get over it, right? Because you're always confronted with him. He's I around. suppose that's it, yes. How, how long ago did this happen? Um, we broke up at about the end of October. Four, four months ago. Uh -huh. like and they never went out that long. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we didn't go out that long. Did you have sex? Nope. All right. Well, it's a non-issue then. No, wait a minute. Why you that? can only gain so much that? emotional pain if you don't have sex. Is that right? Yeah. This is just some biological reality? It never gets to the next degree. In other words, that's as, inten that's as intimate as humans can get, is what you're saying. I am saying, I'm I would, saying, hold on, Rachel, I'm talking. Now. What I'm saying is, is there's a certain um, you know, plateau or border or something that you cross when you become physically intimate. Right. And you can have crushes and you can have feelings and uh, you can cry and you can miss and you can yearn and you can do all these things. But unless the relationship has been uh, consummated, right. it still falls under, it's still in this category. It's, it, it's, it's still in, not as far as it can go. It's in San Diego. Yeah. It's not into Mexico. Right, right, right. When, you, uh, when you've been to Tijuana and back, uh, that's when you know pain. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm saying it would be worse. So, all right. But bo bottom line, regardless of how difficult the feelings are to uh, to deal with here, she needs the time and the space to do it. Right? She needs to be away from the guy for a I, how, I mean, my question for you, Adam. Or, or find another guy. Right. Yeah. Yes. I, but my question for you, Adam, is if I didn't have sex with him, mm -hmm. and so my feelings can't be that deep, then that would be even more of a black box of why can't I get over this? Mm hmm. So you're asking us why you can't get over it? Yeah, I I don't understand. Like I've never, Interesting. I've never had trouble, so much trouble with a breakup before, and and this mm -hmm. is just really have you ever had anyone leave you before? 
No, I mean, I've only gone out with, like, two other guys, and, seriously. And, and you... I guess it was more of a mutual thing. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, the other two times I broke up, like, they were they were bad breakups, though. Like, I didn't speak to the people afterwards. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what it takes. I can't get past that. Her voice sounds like Linus. Yeah. It really does. From uh, Charlie Brown? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, talk about the great pumpkin for just one moment, please. <laughs> I refuse. All right. All right, listen. Um, uh, Look. Yeah, I think a lot of this... Wait, wait, uh, don't, don't hang up. I'm right, done with wait. it. A lot of this... Uh, some of it's ego, which is um, this guy turned gay, and she feels uh, somewhat responsible on some level for that. Two, uh, he left her, basically. And uh, she got caught up into that, and now she's having to see him. And here's what women need to do, and a lot of men do this, too, in a breakup, is they like to get angry at their partner. It's, it's why um, when, when they have a big heavyweight fight and they interview the fighter uh, going up into the heavyweight fight, they never say, yeah, he said, all right, guys, professional, it's all business. You go in there, you do what you try to do, we're all professional athletes. Mm -hmm. They always say they hate the guy. And right. they want to kill him. Why? Because you need that yeah. to be eff to be effective. It helps you, yeah. Yeah, and when you're young and you break up, you got to hate the person because it helps you uh, keep your distance from them and not get in touch with those feelings. I, I get the sense of this. The, we're probably not, we have no ability to get at it in just the few minutes we have here, but there's something more subtle going on there. Some, something about the, the, the nature of that relationship. Well, she's pre-med. Come on, Trish. Right. She's got problems. Right. There's no doubt about okay. that. All right. All right. I would get away from the guy, possibly uh, take a little break from the speech and debate. Yeah, find a way to get some distance so at least you can get over this thing. I mean, How that's, long that's before uh, she yells homo across the uh, <laughs> table during the heat of the debate? She's a, their partners. All right. We're, uh, today's topic, the merits of the squeegee. Um, Larry, you're pro. Uh, Rachel, you'll be con squeegee. Okay, little inside uh, gay squeegee humor for Dr. Drew. Dan. Yeah. You're 17 years old. Yep. What's going on? All right. Um, I've been seeing this girl for 11 months now, and we decided to call it quits like three days ago. Mm hmm And she calls me yesterday, and we had a big talk, and it turns out now she's a month pregnant. Is that, you think that's definitely... Was like a year and a half ago, she had an abortion with another guy. All right, hold on a sec, Dan. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dan uh, we, yeah, used the S word flagrantly. Yes. And um, I think we have to start disciplining idiots who uh, just work in the word uh, ass. Uh, you finish it off. Uh, just in, it just is, it is, is part of an explanation <laughs> of another story that doesn't really have a whole lot to do with stuff. That's right. Uh... You know what I mean? Yeah. I understand if someone's like in the heat of battle and they yell, I don't give a good ass, and it just comes flying out of their mouth. Yeah. But uh, just uh, saying, um, yeah, she backed up all her ass. <laughs> <laughs> no real need for that one. There are let's plenty of other words. No, let's talk to her. we got to turn snacking to a f <laughs> All right, but you can see that uh, I was I was very charged, and we were talking about snacking, and you were probably this one back for us. Yeah. All right, Dan, continue. And now I'm just kind of I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say to her, what I'm supposed to do about it, because I'm not going to totally just stitch out on her. All right, what was the big talk about yesterday? You well, she kind of just threw, she told me yesterday that she mm -hmm. was pregnant. That was the reason you had the big talk. Yeah, because we haven't been. We decided to call it quits, and I haven't talked to her. And then yesterday, she just came up and told me, but yeah. she knew before, and I don't know why she didn't tell me before. Who Sorry. decided to break up with who? Um, mainly me, but she was in agreement with it. See, it's just kind of suspicious. That's all. I just. You know, why wouldn't she have told you when she found right. out, considering uh, you were theoretically together when she found yeah, out? Maybe she, maybe she knew the end was near and was going to maybe, on her own, thinking, I'm going to get a abortion, I'm going to get deal with this, and uh, yeah. I'm going to let this, this yeah. uh, relationship die a natural death. Uh -huh. How old is she? She's 17 also. Uh -huh. well, what is it she's planning to do with the pregnancy? See, that's what she doesn't know yet, and she wants, she wants to hear what I want to do about it, but... I don't know. What I'm, do you want to I'm, do? I'm, I can say I'm 17, but that's only an excuse. Well, no, but that's uh, not a bad one, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you so said you weren't wearing a condom or anything like that. Yes, I was. You were? Yeah, but 
I've I don't know. I've had it's I've had a break on me at least three times. Did this one break? Yeah. Well, I know you know that this one broke. Yeah. Well, maybe you didn't uh, sew it up good the first time. No. You're aware that this one broke? Yeah. It would have been about that time when it did happen. How a month ago? Yeah. Oh, if only the kids had known about the morning after pill, Drew. Yeah. Isn't it a tragedy? Yeah. And she's used that before too. She has. Yes, okay. and then she it. I don't know. She's used it a couple times. The the doesn't it induce her hormone or something. Mm. The pill that. The, night after or whatever. Uh-huh. You know what now? I don't know. She tells you it doesn't work? No, she she just, I don't know, she, I don't, she didn't use it. Dan's a little sketchy on this. Yeah, on the, they, Dan is not what you call a detail man <laughs> when it comes to relationships. He's more of an, a broad view, uh, an overall man. Yes, indeed. He does, not, he does not sweat the details. But there is a morning after <laughs> pill for everyone else who might be interested in detail, and that is that overall, a low overall can be taken within a day or two of uh, it's like, an unprotective It's like taking a high dosage of the birth control yeah, pill that's, 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 after the condom yes, breaks. That's absolutely what it is, and it's very effective in reducing the risk of pregnancy. It prevents ovulation, so the pregnancy's not right, So there's no answer for Dan. Dan has to talk to her. Dan, they have to come to some agreement between the two of them. And it's like, uh, you know, step A leads to step B, leads to step C, or maybe step A uh, doesn't lead to anything. Yeah, but you know I what I mean? He need, he maybe, I, I, and just, he needs to keep his uh, sort of wits about him and realize that there's something suspicious about this story. What, you know, what is up here that she didn't tell him in the first place? And make sure that he knows for sure, categorically, that she is pregnant. Right, and then begin talking to people about what her options are. Uh, all right. Stay with her, you know, and uh, if you, and uh, let her let her know what your feelings are. At seventeen, it doesn't sound like you're ready to be a father. Adoption is an option. Remember that. All right. Hey, did you just, did you just uh, come up with that. Yeah, I think it's kind of the way you delivered it. You yeah, did, you broke it up. I don't know. I think it was a syllable emphasis yeah. or something. You went. Remember, adoption is an option. <laughs> A week of vacations is great. Daniel. Yeah. You're 21. Hope we get our act back together again. Huh? No. That's it. We've lost the magic. It's over. Daniel. Uh-oh. See what I mean? Daniel. Jack Hole. Hello? What's going on? Um, somebody's trying to beep in on my phone. Well, forget wanna... it. I'm gonna. Good. Um, there's gonna be something. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, basically, what my problem is, is that um, I just recently asked my girlfriend to marry me. Mm-hmm. I've been seeing her for about a year. And um, up until about two weeks ago, everything was fine. And then, um, I don't, I mean, I really don't know what happened. Um, she mm-hmm. was staying here for a while at my house. And then she went back to her, or she was kind of in between here and her mom's house. And then uh, there was some financial problems with her parents and her, with her car. And they had to get a loan. And they kicked her, ended up kicking her out because um, she... Why that? Making a late payment on her loan or something. Right, right. Mm-hmm. What, what does that have to do with her refusing to get married? It's not. She's not refusing to get married with me. This is just. It's the whole. Yeah. It's, it's a communication problem. How old is she? She's twenty-one as well. What is the uh-huh. communication problem? Um, well, uh, when I asked her on New Year's Day, uh, and yeah. she was surprised, as most people are, and um, try to tell me in a sentence what is the communication problem. Forget the story. Okay. Every time I try to make time to talk about it with her, she has something else that's... That's that's not a communication problem. That's avoidance. Okay. She's doing that volitionally, consciously or otherwise. She's afraid of this issue for some reason. Okay. um, Yeah. Something I can do about this? I mean, well, I mean, she might be ready to get married. I mean, she doesn't want to get married. I mean, she's afraid she's going to hurt you or lose you if she gives, tells you her real feelings. Communication problem. <laughs> it's like, uh, listen, the guy laughed at me when I handed him the job application and threw me out of his office. There's a little communication breakdown in there. I still think I'm a prime candidate for the job. Of course. Daniel, please. She doesn't want to get married. I'm not asking her to get married right away. This is an engagement thing. Nah, even that's scary. You're, you're, yeah, you're 21. I mean, for a lot of people, that's a scary time. It's awfully young to get married. Some people. What do you want to get married so fast for? Well, because I love her, and I was under the assumption that she loves me. Well, maybe she does. Maybe she's not ready to get married. She may just be smarter. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
probably. I mean, listen, she can love you and you can love her, but she can still realize that you've been together for ten and a half months, and uh, you know she's getting tossed out of her house and uh, yeah, uh, it's like got a guy repossessing her Vega and is not ready to tie the knot or even uh, consider tying the knot at this point. Right. You don't have to take that as a rejection. Although I would take it as a mild rejection. Well, I, I would... F look, you guys have got to be clearer in your communications, indeed. And the, you guys, she needs to be less avoidant, and you need to be le maybe less pressuring, or whatever it is that uh, she feels she needs to avoid. Give her more an, sort of an opportunity to be open. Yeah. Uh, and uh, feel safer letting her show you her real feelings. But mm, She sounds like she's coming from a little chaos. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way. Yeah. And uh, Daniel may be doing his best to see if he can mop things up a little. Mm. And uh, it's not a good impulse. I mean, you, you don't take her away from that. Uh, let her heal those wounds, take care of that herself, and then you guys can sort of find each other later on. But uh, yeah, she moved in with him and then moved back, and then her parents tossed her out over some sort of loan, and there's a communication problem. Yeah. Mm, it's sounding a little bit fishy here. Yeah. All right, so here's what you do, Daniel. You tell her, uh, listen, I made this proposal, and uh, I'm serious about it, but I understand it doesn't feel to me like you're uh, quite, uh, it, like it's a good time in your life to respond to this. So go ahead. Take your time, and uh, let's just uh, keep moving forward with the relationship. Uh, take all the pressure off, in other yeah, words. That and uh, give her an opportunity to tell you her real feelings. All right, so uh, what are we doing here, Drew? We're going on. Yeah, what's the next? I'm going to break. But. Well, I had this one picked, but you didn't like that one. Well, I thought it was a little depressing, that's all. Uh, and you can go ahead and sell it. A uh, little sister is suicidal. Should she, she tell her parents? Angel's calling it. Okay, very right. important. See, a great sense of relief that the holidays are actually over. Yeah, think, me I too. Mean, when you mentioned music, I thought, oh, that goddamn concert we had to go to. And then, <laughs> and then oh, yeah. <laughs> True, that goddamn yeah. concert we had to go to is uh, the one that uh, people uh, sell know. their stereo I system know. to get one ticket in pathetic. the back it, of the arena. They should have my place there. It's pathetic that, that I take up body space with the people that really would enjoy that. Yeah. Really, it is. And, uh, you no, know, it's, it's, uh, it's true. Uh, everything is relative. And um, one man's uh, trash is another man's treasure. For, for, for us, having to go to the concert and broadcast for two hours is uh, drudgery. Uh, for, for some, for many, who, who are now. listening to our voices right now, just to be uh, sitting up in that booth yeah. uh, for an hour would be, would be a thrill. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what do you do? How do you cure that? You know the only way to cure that? is to switch lives with people, like um, for uh, a weekend, uh, yeah. five times a year. Yeah, yeah. So Some uh, like 19-year-old that needs to live my life. I'd be like, yeah, a, porn part about I'd life. Be like a porn star and a blimp pot, pot <laughs> pilot and a field goal kicker, and I'd be happy. <laughs> All right. Now, here's the key to life, everybody. you got to appreciate whatever it is you're doing when you're doing it. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, the whole thing goes by and the joke was on you. I don't want to sound too trite here, but you got to get in the moment a little bit and try to enjoy uh, where you're at, what you're doing. Now, wait a minute, though. What if, what? You, what if when you were digging ditches in the 105-degree heat, you were trying to enjoy what you were doing at that moment mm. as opposed to letting it slip by as quickly as possible? Right. Now, here's what I, here, here's what I thought about when I did that. I'm miserable, but it is what I'm doing right now. And because it is what I'm doing right now, I'm going to try to do it the best I can because I want yeah. to get in the habit of doing things well. Doing things well is different than Which I'm totally throwing out the window now, by the way. We, we all are aware of that. I know, but, you understand that. But uh, <laughs> to appreciate the moment and to enjoy it and, and to Listen, I didn't, relish it is I didn't different. savor the moment yeah. while the uh, Vietnam vet who was strung out on painkillers was yelling at me to run out to his truck and get his uh, four-foot level. Yeah. But I, I did say, as long as I'm here, uh, let's not let this... And it would turn out to be a pretty big chunk of my life, uh, my 20s, doing that. And I managed to have a, a decent time or okay. two. All right. All right. Angel. Yeah? Stop effing around with my heartfelt theories, Drew. <laughs> uh, you're 16 years old. Mm -hmm. you're, That's uh, what's been... We were getting along too well tonight. Right. That's what's missing. All right, quiet now. You're, uh, let's see, sis is suicidal... Should you tell your parents? How old's your sister? Fourteen. How do you know she's suicidal? Okay, well, we share a room, and yesterday I went in there, and, like, she wasn't in there. And um, there was a sweater on the ground addressed to, like, her friend. Uh-oh. And I thought it was kind of weird because she's, like, left it out. So 
after I picked it up and I started reading it, and it like <laughs> said that she was thinking about killing herself and that she already has her suicide note written out and stuff. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Yeah, but she kind of wanted her to find it, which is a good sign. It's really weird because, like, before that, because we just moved, and before that, we were going to move, um, and she kept on telling me, oh, I'm not going to move, you know, I'll, I'll kill myself before I move. What's going on at home? What's your family life like? Um, well, my mom just left my stepdad, and before, we're, they were having, like, a lot of problems and stuff. And where's your biological dad? Um, I don't know. What happened with him? Um, my mom divorced him when I was, like, like three, I think. And so your sister was just one? What? And your sister was one? Yeah. And he, he's been out of the picture the whole time? Yeah, because he was like an alcoholic and he beat and my mom and stuff. stepdad is somebody that your sister had a relationship with? Um, what? Did, you, did your sister have a decent relationship with your stepdad? Um, we all don't really like him. Hmm. No, what a, um, what a coincidence right. that his mom, that uh, her mom would initially marry a abusive alcoholic dump him and then imagine not learning from that first experience. Can you imagine right? that? I can't imagine that. She went out and married another guy who was an a-hole. Huh. No, huh. The second one is an alcoholic. Isn't? No. We, we understand that, but he's also he, he may be, yeah, it just hasn't manifested. He's not a great guy. Yeah, he's not a great guy, yeah. Well, he's not a great guy to us, but he treats my mom like she's a queen. Hmm. Yeah. I wish your mom had a set of nuts so you could kick her in them. <laughs> Where can All you right. kick a woman, Drew, that really gets up? Well, I'm in the press? <laughs> no, it would be Chuck you. Norris Andy to do that. Uh, but, Angel, yeah, this is a serious thing. You've got to understand that... that uh, I know, I'm like, I wasn't sure if she was, like, joking. Th th like, you can't make that decision. You well, can't... I wouldn't write my friend that I was suicidal. They might think I'm crazy or something. So I don't know if she left it out for me to find... A Angel, whatever her motivation and however sincere her intent, you're not in a position to make that determination. You're, you're 16 yourself. You've come across some information... And you have to take it seriously. I strongly urge you to tell parents or teachers or both and get her the help she needs. She's obviously terribly depressed. The suicidality is just a symptom of her depression and suggests just how severe her suffering is with the depression. And there's treatment. And recognize that depression of this degree is life-threatening. You may be saving your sister's life. So no matter what her reaction is, it doesn't matter. You have to take this completely seriously and, and notify people that are in a position to get her to some help. Well, any time the end result is as uh, final and tragic as death, uh, you can't sort of sit around and go, meh. You can't worry about the nuances of the relationship. No, mm -hmm. not really. If it was, uh, if she was like threatening to uh, step on a nail, then yeah. you could go, ah, maybe she does, maybe she doesn't, yeah. uh, I'll wait it out. Or, or if there's been a long history of this sort of acting out, you, you know, you, I could understand that you might not um, take it so seriously, but you're not in that position now. All right, so what, what should she do? Tell the parents. Tell the parents. Mom. Mom. Yeah. I don't like this, Mom. No. You got to know. Uh, Kimley. Yeah. You're 16 years old. Uh-huh. What's going on there, Kimley? Well, like... What the uh, hell? Is that your real name? Yeah. Now, Kimley sounds older. Uh-huh. That's something we don't comment about very often, right? Yeah, you're 16. You sound like 61. Yeah, well, I've always been like that. People always think that. Uh-huh. When I was 12, my mom's friends used to hit on me, okay? Oh, boy. But anyhow, <laughs> wait, wait. Stop, my friend. Go back. <laughs> what was that about the sexual advances from your friends? Yeah, parents yeah. Well, friends. Okay. Parents' friends. Oh, I can't believe it. Okay, but um, just recently, I found out that I had genital herpes, and um, I'm like, right now, I'm like seeing like three guys. How do you find out? Oh boy, hold yeah, on. Yeah. Oh, wait, gambling. All right. Gambling is first gambling of the new year. All right. All right now. Kimberly sounds like she's um, 46. Yeah, she sounds like she's 46, and she's seeing three guys simultaneously. And and evidently active with them. Uh, Wait, am I gonna? True. Oh. You that really saddens me to see you pull out change. I'll get a go. I had a great time. You know, I was on that uh, cruise ship, Drew. Yeah. I went to the, uh, I needed, um, I took a little vacation, went on this cruise ship, uh, pain in the ass, basically. Um, went to the uh, casino to try to get some cash out for uh, some kind of purse or tipping or something like that. Said to the woman who's inside the cashiers, uh, by the way, these uh, cruise ships are, uh, they're really not cruise ships at all. They're um, carnivals on water. They're really the barges that they, uh, that went to Ellis Island 
right. uh, around the turn of the century. But is, is it the same? Uh, like, there's not a goddamn person who speaks English on this entire thing. Yeah. But it's kind of like carny people work on those too, don't they? You know, carnies? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the people that are uh, I think mostly uh, drug, uh, uh, drug mules, uh, the unemployable, and fugitives from uh, the international law. <laughs> And and nobody speaks a word of English, uh, and and it's all very bad. And you know, like the the captain will come on and make these announcements, and the mater d will make these announcements, and and it'll be like, um, oh, the, this is your captain. Uh, we will uh, we're steaming at to a twenty four nautical knots, and we shall arrive at a destination. And I'm like, oh, what the hell is this guy talking about? It was a bad PA system, too. They couldn't understand a word this guy was saying the entire time. It's funny, too. They tell you where you are. Uh, the longitude is 23 oh. with the... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Copernicus. Uh, hold on. Let me get the sexton out. Uh, how long before we can get to port and I can buy some chiclets? <laughs> All right, anyway. So I go into the um, cashier. casino at yeah. the cashier. And I got to get some cash. And you, there's no cash on these ships. Right. So unless you go into the casino. So I say, look... Here's my little uh, credit card thing they give you. I'll cash this thing in, and uh, I want some cash back. Uh, give me 75 bucks. I, I'm sorry, we cannot uh, give you the cash. Uh, why not? All we can give you is chips for gambling uh. and change for the slot machines. Right. I said, what happens when somebody cashes in their chips? Uh, then we can give them cash. But I can't give you cash, just chips. Or chain. Oh boy! I said, but if I turned in a bunch of chips or change, you could then do it for cash. Yes, I said, give me seventy-five dollars worth chips. of nickels. Oh, she counted out seventy-five dollars worth of nickels, gave it to me, and then I handed it right back to her, and I said, give me seventy-five bucks. I'm cashing this in. Oh, <laughs> what did she do? She was pissed and did it. Oh. Why don't you just say give me five seventy-five dollars in chips? Well then, I, I just wanted, I wanted to f with her at yeah, that point because she did. I made her do it in nickels. It was uh, it was awesome. I had forty five pounds worth of nickels, Drew. I mean, I had ten dollar nickel rolls uh, up to uh, no, they're five dollar nickel rolls, and I had like a hundred fifty of these things <laughs> and a huge pile. I couldn't even carry them all. I took I stepped four feet back and I stepped up again and piled them all on the counter. And I said, I'd like to cash this in for some uh, larger bills, please. Thank you. Stupid. This is why, by the way, I am unemployable in any of these situations because I uh, my policy is w the the policy of the wind. Whatever makes sense. If you hand out money and you hand out chips and you'll cash in chips and money, then there's no reason why you can't hand someone seventy five bucks if they hand you their little card. Yep. The same card that will get them money and chips, just chains and chips. I would I would eliminate that whole process. Of course. Wait, 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 no, no, where the hell were we? We're we're gonna. Bad on Kim Lee. Oh, yeah. After the right. break. All right. When, uh, big, big, uh, the new, uh, and, and this, by the way, is going to set the tone for the new year, Drew. What well, is? Live by the wind? <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to see if I can set that <laughs> right, wind don't, tone in a second. Don't. No. I was experimenting with my diet, however, on the ship. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure oh, out that's the, right. the greatest. That uh, girl you're supposed to. Uh... Yes, that's right. Now that we're back here in 98, we have to work out the $500 for the uh, head fart function. It's to raise awareness the or something. H I haven't quite figured out. Perhaps we'll pick up a sponsor too. I got this all worked out. So we got a bunch of stuff to get through. Some well, gambling, some part talk. What's the new year thing? Well, meaning whoever wins this bet will sort of oh, set I see. a cadence. I see. All right. This You'll be it. the front runner. I see. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The opening bout. Yeah. yeah. We we got to keep tallies of these now too, so we can officially start here in '98. All right. When we come back, the uh, first. Th no. No. Yeah. It was. I remember she was, she was good, huh? Yeah. Mm. Well, I had no idea she had that potential. No. Right. Well, was she doing, uh, like, the cone heads and stuff? No, she did, like, a Jenny McCarthy thing. It was very funny. And uh, just it just it showed, uh, just the couple skits I saw showed more range than I expected out of her. Mm. Yeah, that's Jenny McCarthy. She's, uh, boy, she's really skyrocketing to the top. Just as you predicted. Thank God that... Thank God the genius is uh, over there at NBC, so I fit to give her a 22-week uh, deal. Uh, congratulations, boys. <laughs> you got her for another uh, three and a half months. Good. Maybe we can bury the show somewhere. That's just the genius of TV. Good work. All right. Well, 
Boy, it's really, uh, these guys are, uh, they're like, um, actually, I just came up with a new science. Oh, yeah? Well, you know how everyone uh, is interested in all these uh, Nostradamus types and uh, these gypsies and these uh, uh, these uh, clairvoyant types who can, you know, look into a crystal future. ball and yeah, see yeah. the future and all that kind of stuff. But could, could uh, be you. they're frequently wrong. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, they can, they're not really much. I, I've come up with a great idea. We just get uh, TV executives. And we ask them, hey, what is your feeling about this? The and then you just do 180 degrees. You do the exact opposite, and you know you're going to be right. That's all. You go, interesting. Hey, what do you think about this Jenny McCarthy? Going to be a big star? Uh, yes, huge. We'll give her 22 weeks. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> now we know. Genius. Absolutely genius. <laughs> Tom Arnold. We'll give him a show. We'll uh, name it Tom Arnold. Because everyone loves Tom Arnold. All right. Uh, give Polly Shore a show. Name it Polly. Good idea. These guys need shows with other names. So people think for like the first episode. I would call the Polly Shower Show the Flip Wilson Show. <laughs> just to get some viewers the first time around. Hey, Flip's back. Oh, jeez. What happened to his hair? <laughs> He's not doing that Geraldine bit as much anymore either. All right. All right, I'm done being cruel. Now, where were we? You're talking about your diet. My diet? You were, you were tuning your diet for the HFF. Ah, that's right. That's right. I was experimenting with the uh, different foods, and I told you told you how um, uh, I thought fruit was uh, one yeah. of my main components yeah. in gas. Turns out, not uh, quite as essential a component yeah. as I uh, initially predicted. I wouldn't think so. No, but I'm still convinced that the fruit and fiber combination, which I wasn't uh, sufficiently uh, able to experiment with uh, over the cruise, is the key to gas. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, get this girl out from uh, Tucson, I believe, in here, and I will pay her $500 to fart on her head. As a matter of fact, uh, Ann, uh, Lisa, or Sherry, if you have her phone number, you may, uh, in the uh, Loveline calendar uh, in front of you, I know it's uh, chock full of celebrities and uh, bands and whatnot, but if you could squeeze her in at some point and lock her in for a date, I could then begin selling this, and we'll get... Uh, We'll get folks that want to uh, pay and uh, come on out and uh, hang with us for an evening. Perhaps uh, I'll make a, a batch of my famous uh, um, Pillsbury popover um, ones I do with the, uh, the uh, what kind of cheese is that, Drew? I uh, sprinkle it on top. Parmesan? The Parmesan, my Parmesan what are you popovers. About? They're, so, they're so, so famous, I've never heard you dis no, I mention them. I made it and cooked up a batch of those and feed them to the hungry crowd. Oh, I see. How big of a crowd do you want down here? Well, here's what I'm looking for, and enough, to decide decide enough so he doesn't have to pay anything for this person to come here, right? Yeah, exactly. I figure between the uh, seven of us, uh, mm. six of us, seven, yeah, six of us, we're going to come up with about 150 bucks, uh, oh. with me putting in the bulk of it. All right. Good. Therefore, we need about 350 to make it up. Right. And we'll figure out what people want to pay. I think we could get 50 bucks ahead no, to come in a here. Lot. Well, well, it's not. A, it's not a whole lot. A guy goes out to a concert and whatnot. It right. cost him fifty bucks. Spend a couple like hours. Bucks. Fifty bucks a couple. Yeah. Tw yeah, twenty-five bucks a person. Yeah, that makes sense. A bid, a fart bid. Yeah. We'll call it. We'll bring like a boutonniere and a corsage. We'll take pictures of them by my ass. The point is, is I don't want to get. I should work on getting some uh, news crews up here. Oh no! I come think, on, no, please. This is I think this is definitely newsworthy. Oh please, absolutely. I want please. our community to see All right, what that's my night we're off. doing. I get a here. night off. Yeah, we're making an impact in the community yeah, okay. here. Thank you. Please. No, uh, it, this all started, by the way, for those who uh, missed the story. A uh, young girl. What the hell was her name? Uh, Lisa. No, Katie. Yeah, she called from Tucson, said uh, she was 19, she worked at like a Red Lobster or something. Somebody offered her 500 bucks to pose naked on the Internet. I sort of uh, was trying to make one of my examples. Uh, she didn't want to do it, but was considering doing it for the 500. I said, what if I uh, farted on your head for 500? Would you do it? Uh, thinking, uh, coming up with a demeaning example of something you could do for $500. And uh, then it decided, I decided it was a good idea. And uh, I think uh, Katie's for it, too. And uh, this is not going to be one of those radio stunts where uh, we put in a fart sound or something like that. They will be farting on the head. She will be in here. I, we will set her up in a military cot. I will do the entire show in my underpants, and uh, I will wait for, for the moment. And I will experiment with the diet uh, in days and weeks uh, approaching that date to make sure that I'm primed and ready to go. Fair enough. And I plan on delivering. I'm 
proud. I just hope Delighted. I don't uh, squeeze so hard that I make on it. It kind of scares me, actually. <laughs> then we got a lawsuit. Happen. Yes, indeed. All right. All right. Now, when we left off, Kimley. Kimley, who's uh, 16, this sort of makes sure. Kimley, mm -hmm. you're still there. I'm here. All right. Now, you got herpes. You're seeing three guys currently, right? Yeah. All sleeping with all of them. Well, yeah. Okay. Not all at the same time or anything, but right. Yeah. Uh, the fact that she could even think of that at sixteen uh, leads to a gamble. She's sleeping with three separate guys, uh, not uh, simultaneously, uh, sort of concurrently. Yeah. All right. So, what is up with her past? Uh, moms. She admitted that her mom's friends made a pass or, or two at her at a young age. What's going on here, Drew? She doesn't have the little girl voice. No, I, I was going to say something happened to her somewhere between eight and twelve, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm kind of heading towards a peer who had been sexually abused, perhaps then sexualized with her. Uh huh. Uh, male or female? Uh huh. Do. Uh huh. So somebody uh, got involved with something uh, physical with her early. Somebody between else who had somebody else who had been abused. Another a peer, or maybe even yeah. an older, like a fourteen year old, something like that. Uh huh. Um, I'm going to go with um, absent uh, papa, no uh, abuse, just um, constantly using men to try Why? to uh, fill that void. Oh, the dad was not around. Dad was never around, and uh, she never really got over that. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm going with. Kimley? Mm-hmm? What's your past like? Well, I don't know. I, like, live with my grandparents right now. Mm -hmm. And, um... My mom lives in Oregon. Why are you apart from your parents? Because I just don't like them. Why? Just because they're screwed up. All right, we're 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 going down a good road here for gambling. Where's are your dad and mom still together? No. Uh huh. When did dad cut out? Uh, it a long time ago. Mm hmm. Never knew Papa. No. Mm hmm. But did she mom bring other guys around? Uh huh. Yeah. Did any of them ever abuse you? No. Mm -hmm. Or touch you or do things that are inappropriate? I've always had, okay, 12 and a quarter. Ooh. I've always just had older boyfriends. Uh huh. How old was the guy when you were 12? 17. Ooh. True, you bastard. I had the dad never around, never knew we can dad. Split it. We can split it. I'll tell you what, since you uh, had the dignity to, uh, to, to gamble and change. I will uh, give you the dollar and a quarter. Oh, I see. That's because kind of... um, easy enough to say dad was... Uh, although I didn't go with dad cut out or divorced. Well, I said what, never read. Yeah, is mom an addict? Dad an addict? Uh, mom. Mom's an addict. And, like, my older sister is, too. Yeah. And uh, so you lived in a real chaotic, difficult environment when you were growing yeah. up, right? And then... Uh, will you pay me 500 bucks if I let you fart on my head? No, I feel <laughs> bad for you, Kimley. Oh, okay. 750 for you. Okay, but my original... Und hey. Understand, Here, here's yeah. the deal. But my original I don't problem. fart on the downtrodden. All right. your, don't, your, don't real problem, your original problem is that you have herpes and you're worried about these guys. You're I don't, yeah, my friend thinks right. I should tell them, and you I don't want to tell them because then they won't want to be with me. Well, Good. You, you should. That's yeah. the best thing that could happen to you. It is the best thing that could happen to you because these, this, all these sexual um, encounters you're having are in themselves attempts to try to deal with very heavy, unpleasant feelings, and they only tend to perpetuate them. Because they really aren't genuine relationships. They're just sort of uh, acting out. Well, I know this. I'm using them as much as they're using me. Well, but you're not using them, though. You're, you're, in, you're ending up using them in a way that doesn't do anything really for you except making you for a moment feel okay about yourself. It's <laughs> like an alcoholic yeah. saying, yeah. Um, I know I'm an alcoholic. I'm yeah. using yeah. Myers, yeah. Uh, the uh, rum manufacturer, as much as they're using me. Right. Or, I know I'm an alcoholic. I can stop any time. I just don't want to. It's working for me now kind of thing. Uh, and, and it will have consequences eventually. And really, a moratorium from relationships would be a good thing for you right now. You need to have be sure they're wearing condoms. You may protect mm -hmm. them from the virus if that's the case. Right. You need to understand this is treatable for you, at least for the initial outbreak, and it can shorten the duration and the amount of viral shedding that goes on. There will be recurrences. That it increases your risk of cervical cancer. You need to be sure to get pap smears once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. And See, you, you listen, know, when I'm in charge, I will come collect... Kimley, uh, I will uh, drag her off to some sort of um, uh, re-enlightenment camp. Ah, that's what I'll call it. Re-enlightenment camp, or um, or uh, what do they call it in China? Re. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. there's there's a name uh, there's a name for it. We'll come up with it during the commercial. Re-enlightenment's not bad. But she is at a crossroads. Re-humanize. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, she she is going down a road of uh, abuse, uh, alcohol, teen pregnancy, uh, drugs, and everything else, and she's right at the point where she can stop that. Yeah. Please, uh, Kimley, talk to somebody and see what you can do about that. Well, how are we supposed to, to mark that bet now? Who won? Because he, he only got a dollar twenty five out of the two. Mike, we'll call that one a split. So, so so far, it's a push. Okay. All right, and we'll be back. Yes, it is Love Line. I'm Carola Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. We're back and in full force now. Wouldn't you say, Drew? We're getting there. All right. You're so modest. That's your problem. Robin. Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. What's happening? Um, I'm 15, and I was adopted before I was born, but my parents brought me home when I was two days old. Mm -hmm. And since I've been growing up with them, I've been wondering what it'd be like to live with my biological parents. Mm -hmm. uh, hell on earth? Uh, yeah. Possibly? <laughs> do you have um, biological parents, or do you have a biological parent and another biological parent? Um, I'm not sure. My parents, my parents that I've been living with, haven't given me any information. Mm -hmm. about well, I'd them. never tell anybody I was. Even if I adopted a black child, <laughs> I wouldn't tell them. Did they were adopted? Yeah, just say, "Hey, what are you talking about? Hey, come on, give me five. What are you talking about? Please." You have vitiligo. That's all. Yeah, you lost your pigment. Yeah, that's uh, right. Like uh, Michael Jackson. Uh, vitiligo. What's going on with your parents? Um, we've your just had a lot of bad things going on between us. Like what? What's happening? Not physical fighting, just a lot of emotional... Why? What's going on? It's... I don't know. Just lots of different thoughts about different things. Like uh, my uh, friends, they have bad things about them. They say bad things about your friends. Huh? How long have you been fighting with your parents? Um, I'd say since I was 13 or so. All right, hold on a second. Let me give you my take on adoption here, Drew. All right. This is the problem with people knowing they're adopted it's a um excuse it's a reason so many people get divorced because divorce is fine you know a uh, hundred years ago 50 it years ago okay, right. it was shameful to be divorced right. and so you had a relationship you had your ups you had your downs but you worked it out you worked it out 50 years went by you're celebrating your uh, golden anniversary right uh, but with some uh, attorney on the next corner, and uh, you turn on the news, and there's uh, Ivana Trump uh, uh, laughing all the way in the bank and all this stuff. Everyone's getting divorced. Right. No, why not? Let's just get divorced. Being a teenager, being a 15-year-old female, you are just... Uh, uh, my sister would have um, was looking for her biological parents, and she was living with her biological parents. Right. I mean, right. uh, it was that uh, chaotic and that hellish over at my uh, household. I can guarantee you, if those were bio, if those were adopted parents, she would have uh, chalked this all up to that. Yeah. No, but no, fifteen-year-old girl gets along that well with her parents. Right. There's trouble, and this uh, is there's some candle out at the end of this long, dark corridor, which is ah, uh, somehow uh, the love yes. of my blood and right. mother. Right. The reality is, is um, dad was a junkie, uh, mom uh, was a groupie, and uh, it ain't happening. Yeah. You'll find that when you find them, but until then, you'll just it'll just be an excuse, and I think it's unfair to the parents that adopted her. Don't fear yourself, too, because you really need to dig in with the people that are connected with you, that are available to you. What do you think of that? Sounds okay. It's, my parents are really protective of me. Yeah. And, I don't know, my mom, my biological mom was 16 when she had me. Mm-hmm. So. They shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> you know what she's thinking about now. Yeah, so they're just way overprotective. Oh, wait a minute, what's she thinking about now? The, 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 uh, modeling mom's behavior. About time to start a family yeah. of your own. <laughs> and wouldn't that be ironic, ironic if you got pregnant and uh, gave your kid up for adoption? There's just a general thing, just a general opinion. And again, listen, I don't mean to be spoiling anybody's fun, but y y whatever you did, if you tell your kids, as, if you're the parent, you, you describe your kids how you were, that, that's a license to do that, yeah. whatever it is. They're gonna they're gonna model that behavior, right? Thank God, no one in my family did anything. <laughs> oh, which is actually how I modeled my life for many a year. Oh, wait, what's, still, you're quite good at it. Still, still going for the brass ring of doing nothing. The Corolla heritage. Uh, there should be a sofa named after my dad, <laughs> like uh, Mr. Ottoman or something. I had I had a footrest named after him. Uh, all right, um, is, right it, is, it, is it the friends? Robin, that they that you most object to them objecting to? Um, yeah, that and just their over 
protect uh, them being so overprotected. G- give us an example of what recently you've been fighting about. Um, I don't know. My, they went down to San Diego for the new year mm-hmm. and said that I could stay up here for a few extra days to work, but they made me fly down on New Year's Eve so I couldn't do anything with anybody. Yeah. So I think All right, well, here, here's something. You're 15. They're a little overprotective. Well, yeah. This is actually legitimate, I think, because some parents don't really acknowledge how important the peer relationships are for a teenager. And if they're frightened of the, you know, what you're going to get into with your peers or what, what your peers are like or who they are, they need to find a way to contain that and monitor that. But for them to take you away from your peers, to me, to my estimation, is kind of damaging. I mean, you really have to allow people your age to spend a lot of time with peers. That's how you develop into who you are. And how they contain that and how they monitor that is really their job. Uh, it's not their job to take you away from them, though. How, so, do, you adopt, how, how do you get adopted while your mom's still pregnant? Um, that happens working. all the time. My mom was told that she couldn't have any children, but my sister, who came along by accident, was sort of a surprise. So they were looking around, I guess, shopping for somebody. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And they ran into this doctor up in Idaho, and they said that they'd be willing to adopt somebody. And my biological mom, who was 15 at the time, didn't know what the hell she was going to do with me. So she decided to put me up for adoption, mm-hmm. and then I ended up where I am now. All right. So... Um and your when, did, when did your biological uh, forget about the whole biological? You don't. Uh, I don't even. All right, we'll just call your parents your parents. Forget about this whole uh, biological stuff. The people that raised you are your parents. Yeah. When did your parents tell you that you were adopted? Um, I forget. It was either when I was five or six years old. No. What kind of insanity is this? And do you look anything like them? Um, it's scary that I do. There are people. No. That... See, I would have never said a thing. And do you know where your biological mom is? No. They haven't given me any information Good. about her. They shouldn't. You yeah. have to pay them for that information. All right, Robin, this is uh, Growing Pains. This is between you and your parents. You need to work it out. Uh, you trying to find your uh, 31-year-old mother, or 30-year-old biological mother, I'm, I'm telling you, is, uh, is a, a road that is going to be paved with disappointment. It is reasonable for you, though, to want to be with your friends. Uh, try to find a way that you can do that in a way that keeps your parents comfortable also. Yes. I'm so still going to let you I'm, do it. I'm looking for my biological mother. Have you seen my mother, Drew? <laughs> Have you ever seen my mother? No. Look nothing like her. Nothing. She looks like a uh, big white marshmallow woman <laughs> with Tom Petty type hair. I do want to meet her, though. The world's straightest hair. Uh. My mother has hair that it, it's like the kind of hair that if you lift it up and drop it, it just shuts like a garage door. Uh-huh. Like uh-huh. like a garage door with a spring busted and the thing <laughs> just came slamming shut. My mother has the thinnest, straightest hair. She has uh, eyebrows that you can't find. Hmm. I think she keeps them in a drawer somewhere. Uh, I, they, 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 you found them. She's white as a ghost. She goes out in the sun, uh, burns uh, within three minutes. The moon burns uh, my mother when she goes out at night. I mean, it's a full moon. And uh, no sense of humor to be found at all. Mm. And uh, doesn't talk much at all. No oh, surprise. <laughs> is there anything good? Uh, the only reason I know, yes, my mother is uh, one of the nicest people you're ever going to want to meet. And uh, is much nicer than I am. Uh, incredibly friend, incredibly friendly, but not you know gregarious or outgoing. Just as nice as uh, anybody could be, and um, has no hatred for anybody, any race, any ethnicity. Does uh, not um, um, would not um, hold anything against anybody. Just uh, as easy a person to get along with uh, as you could find. But um, no sense of humor whatsoever. She wears uh, Anne. You know those headphones that people wear when they're uh, conducting, directing airplanes into parking spaces? Yeah. She wears those when she brushes her teeth? Yes. Why? We- oh, um, she's a, uh, I wouldn't call her a hypochondriac. I would call her like a hypoperventiac, <laughs> if there's a word, uh, such a word for this. She eats nothing but health food. Wait, 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 wait. Why does she wear those when she's brushing her no, teeth? I'm, I'm getting to this. Okay. We've discussed this on the air before, I believe. No. You want yeah. to discuss it on the airplane, I think. 
Oh, we did? No. I'm always so loaded on those uh, plane flights, trying to remember them. I swear to God, we talked about this on the airways. Maybe, maybe. Um, she's a hyperpreventiac. We've talked about that before. She but goes. Not the, not the yeah, we got to know at the same time, I think. All right, well, just shut up. When she goes out, she puts uh, sunblock uh, 157 on. Um, if she is, um, if she's got to like uh, bring uh, bring in the newspaper, she puts on a pair of gloves. Now she's not worried about germs, and she's not running to the doctor. And she's not thinking that she's come down with something. She's just amazingly, uh, preventatively safe about everything. She got herself the, this toothbrush, this, like, uh, brawn uh, turbo plaque buster. And she fires the thing up, and she shoves it in her mouth. And uh, she says the thing is uh, loud, and it bothers her. So she puts these uh, earphones, the, these, not the kind, not like plugs, but the kind that the uh, aircraft mechanics wear out on the tarmac. They're sitting on the, uh, they're sitting on the sink. She puts them on when she brushes her teeth. By the way, bone conduction of that sound is quite effective. You yeah. Can't, you can't prevent it with those no, headphones. No, that's what I tell her. Right. Now listen, I, I know what I'm, sa what I'm saying, uh, you're picturing a totally insane <laughs> woman here. I say to my mom, Mom, what the hell's up with those uh, headphones? Because I'm the kind of guy who uh, removes asbestos in a pair of shorts and uh, sandals <laughs> with uh, no mask and no shirt on. So we have a, to a totally different approach uh, to life. But um, I say, Mom, what's up with the uh, what's up with those headphones? You're, you're brushing your teeth for Christ's sake. You're <laughs> you're not uh, bringing a, a DC-10 in for an overhaul. Uh, she says uh, the thing is loud. And uh, it annoys me, and I put these things on. And I say, why? Yeah, and she says, I have them. I didn't go out and buy them. Uh, my stepdad has them. And uh, I like it this way. It means something. That must look it means silly, something. though. Oh, yeah. yeah. It means something. Wait, well, it's silly, but it's not, it's, not, it's not often you brush your teeth in front of a, in front of a cr uh, you know, crown, so... She gets away with it. Now, what's up with the gloves when she went, goes out to get the newspaper? Well, that she's may have been of germs, that may have been a little hyperbole, but uh, what I mean is, is if she's going out to do like yard work, she's got the gloves on, she's got the big brim hat on, you know, so the sun uh, oh, okay. doesn't that's normal doesn't catch her. She's one of these, you know, yeah. she's one of these people careful. that's over over careful. But it's not like she doesn't drive freeways or she doesn't fly in airplanes or she doesn't, uh, you know, she drives her car across the country twice a year and all that kind of crap. I don't know what it means, but it means something. Let's go on. Yeah. Oh, no, it does mean something. Does she drink? Oh. No. No drinking. No one in my family, except for my grandmother, who's uh, borderline lush, I, I now believe. Uh, nobody drinks. Nobody smokes. Nobody goes to bed after nine. Nobody collects a stamp, a car, or a coin. Uh, there's not really a favorite TV show. She had the marijuana thing going though. Smoked her uh, share of weed in the uh, in the um, early mid seventies. Mm, been off uh, everything for more than twenty years, and uh, nobody touches anything. That's uh, I handed uh, my my family so dumb with alcohol. I gave uh, my dad, and my stepmom, a recycled gift this year. I gave him a bottle of Don Perignon uh, champagne uh, that the MTV gave me. Yes, uh, you know I felt like an idiot, but it was uh, well, you know, last minute. And there it was sitting up on my countertop, and I said, "Ah, oh, for Christ's sake, I'm not going to go out and buy him something." They, by the way, got me a basket, a gift Somebody basket. Gave them. No, I don't think anyone gave it to him because I think they got it from uh, from Gelson's or something. And it was the basket was fine, but what they don't realize is I'm knee deep in baskets. Oh yeah. Every time Drew and I do one of these uh, Charles Grodin or 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 the uh, Keenan or something like that, they give you a big fat basket. I got tons and tons of baskets, so it's kind of ironic that you. <laughs> I don't look at it as a basket as a gift anymore. I look at it as payment. <laughs> <laughs> but. The point is, is they gave me a basket, and I gave my dad a bottle of this uh, hundred dollar champagne. But my dad is so out of it with the in the booze department that when I handed him the distinct uh, Don Perignon box. Uh, green box yeah. with the gold lettering, he looked at it, took a beat, went, hey, "That's something," and he just said it. He said it behind him and just sort of moved on with his stuff. Hey, is well, you it know, I think he's got a thing with you. No, he doesn't know. I don't know. I, I got to meet your dad. He doesn't know. <laughs> He does not know the difference between one. It was like something with some French writing on it. It's a bottle of booze. He, he put it on the on the thing. Yeah, but he seems to summarily dismiss anything from you that is of distinction. 
He didn't know it was of distinction. Especially dismiss it then. He didn't know it was of any distinction, was the thing. I don't know. He thought his son bought him a bottle of booze for Christmas. Yeah. Which is which is pretty close. If you you take out the word bought, (laughs) he's uh, he's right on there. All right, anyway. Enough about the family true place. Right. Mom's a fabulous woman. All right. uh, Let's go on. Five? Yeah. All right. Rosa, you're 17. Yeah. What's going on? Um, well, I, I told my dad to get out of my life about a month ago, and um, and I'm thinking about maybe if I'm inviting him back into my All right, life. Hold on. How do you support yourself? I mean... What do you mean? Oh, I, I, live, I live with my mom. Um, they're divorced. Yeah. And so he was sort of around, but wasn't you weren't... Yeah, he, he, we had kind of regular visits, except he's in and out of rehab, and... Um, and I see him, you know, at intervals. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're in a place where you've had enough of his addiction, uh, you can actually help him if you if you tell him you will ha- have him, include him in your life insofar as he's in recovery, but you'll have nothing to do with him when he's in his disease. See, I have a hard time talking to him about the fact that he's a drug addict. Why? Because it's something that's always been kind of like... Whispered well, he, he needs to know why he's being uh, shut out, and it, it, believe me, it's gonna—it could help him. It's maybe the only thing that could help him. He needs to understand the consequences of his addiction. He needs to hear that. Well, um, when when I when I told him that I didn't want him in my life anymore, he he just started crying, and um, I don't know if, if I started talking to him and confronting him, I felt I feel like I don't know what he would do. He'd either get violent or he'd well, or he'd run away. I don't know. Well, I don't know how much more difficult the message can be. Then I want you out. Uh, it, it it just needs to be. I want you out because I've had enough of this disease. I will have you back when. I mean, you give him hope. You have him back when you're in recovery, and then you need to go some Alatine or get some support for yourself, so you have a place to go and talk about this, and also get a place where you can get some information, understanding of what the disease is and how it works, so you can assess whether he's actually in recovery when he comes back to you, telling you how well he's doing. What drugs he into? Heroin. Oh, did and she mention that? Alcohol. No. I figured it was pretty bad, though. Whatever. Yeah, sound right. So, uh, Rosa, I, you've done the right thing. Uh, go to Alateen or, or any of these uh, codependency groups. You need some support. It's a very difficult situation. You know, for someone to confront her dad, mm. this parentalization of kids is just such a horrible thing. Like, she is now the parent, and dad is this pathetic infant. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of that going around. A lot of uh, parents forcing their kids to become parents at uh, very young ages. It ain't like the Waltons. Oh, no. That John boy was like 45, still living at home. Ma and Pa and sitting down for some apple pie. Hmm. Ah, those days are long gone. I blame electricity. Really? Yes. How about not just television or radio? Now, uh, those are all the uh, the the, uh, the spawn of electricity. But right. Electricity. I blame Edison. It's really where technology comes from. Le- yeah. Electrons. Think about that. Out. Think about how much we're, uh, how good this country was oh. before electricity. People we sat like, around and told stories. Well, that's the point. We had more. We had to do more, so we <laughs> had less right. free time. All right. I didn't want to necessarily dissect that. All right. Sure. That's just enough. Where are you going? I'm talking to Aaron. Aaron's been on hold for 86 minutes. <laughs> she has kind of a non-question, but we'll uh, we'll see if we can get rid of her. Aaron. Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. Um. Well, ever since like school started this year, I'm a freshman, so I don't know. It's been a little hard, you know, and like. I just had, like, this major problem where I just don't know where I fit in at all. Mm-hmm. I'm just, like, totally just out there floating around. Do you have any friends? Well, yeah. But they're, like, totally opposite. Of one another? Yeah, like, my boyfriend right now, he's, like, a major punk, you know? Yeah. Total, you know, just all out. And I got a bunch of prep friends and... Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, um, Lathe? Garrett, the head of the Sochas. What? Uh, there's uh, there's uh, Charlie Boy and the Coca Cola Kid. I'm thinking of the movies, The uh, Outsiders. Is that a movie? The no. Greasers and the Sochas. Yeah. Soda Pop. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, oh, the, but Aaron, that Ralph Macchio. He was so fine at about 17, wasn't he, girls? What are you struggling mm-hmm. with right now? What What are you so angry about? Well, it's just that like. Right now, I've kind of been, like, trying to, I don't know, ease away from my boyfriend because it's just too much I don't want to handle right now. But, but 
what what led you to him in the first place? Well, like, well, I met him. Like, are you angry about something right now in your life? No, I'm just kind of sick and what, what I don't feel good. <laughs> Hold on. What, what led you to him? Uh, well, I met him. <laughs> well, it was just the whole punk thing, actually. Probably. Why? What are you angry about? What are you sick about? Well, he like he's into drugs. What and are you angry oh, about? Oh boy. Aaron, I take yeah. you for some reconditioning too. I think that's Maeve uh, rehumanizing. Rehumanizing is that what they call it? You, you, no, they what? call it re-enlightening. Oh, uh, re-enlightening's fine. Uh, what are you angry about, Aaron? Well, it just—it's confusing me. No, forget, forget what's going on right now. Why did you go? Oh, for Christ's sake! I can see why we had her on hold for an why hour. Why did you and hook half. in with a punk in the first place? Were you angry about something? Was something not going on? Probably right the now? whole like excitement of it. Or okay, but what was what? Well, what what was gratifying about that? What was well, maybe life? rebelling against my parents? What was uh -huh. with your parents? What was up with your parents? Well, I don't know. It's just they're tough to handle. <laughs> why? Well, my mom, she's sort of there. <laughs> That's who I live with, but she's like, I don't know. Is, is there either of them a little hippie-ish? No. No. Uh, are they, well, because that, that tends to correlate with uh, choosing a punk. Does she wear industrial ear protection when she brushes <laughs> her teeth? <laughs> no. Okay. But I Have I, you resolved some of that now? I've recently learned, like, in the past year or something, a lot about her that I don't like. Yeah. That I don't want to, like, end up like. Because I listen to your show a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, how things, you know... By the way, uh, just a, a, a quick caveat to all the listeners. Uh, don't investigate your parents' uh, past. It's <laughs> well, always uh, disappointing. It's like, it's like what I overhear. No, oh, okay. All right, but it, to me, it, it it suggests that that was all about some sort of acting out of something. And maybe you're resolving some of that now, and you're getting back more involved with people that are more gratifying for you. And you want to move in that direction. I mean, if the boyfriend is not somebody you want to be around anymore... It's not so confusing, is it? I mean, it was gratifying when it was gratifying. It's not so important to you now. It's not working. You need to find your way out. Because yeah, well, when you're out, it will look a lot worse to you <laughs> once you're finally out. This, by the way, is why I don't trust anyone who sort of picks a uh, party. I guess, you know, when you get older... It's narrow. Isn't it true that when you pick something like that, you pick a, a sexual preference, you pick a... A uh, how you dress preference. You're actually narrowing. You're, you're not expressing yourself. You're you're no longer expressing yourself. You're narrowing your range of expression. Yeah, you understand. You put a pierce through your nose, and the, now you now you've done something to yourself, and it's no one doing it. You can't do that anymore. Well, it's like you get older. You're either a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent. And when you're young, you're like either punk or surfer or soch or a, a preppy. I, I I don't trust anyone who uh, gets too involved with anything. Labels. That's labels. Everyone relax. Forget about everyone's labels. Start uh, dating normal people that look like you. That what? That's bad advice. I don't 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 start dating some guy who's got a clothespin up his ass. You know what I'm talking about? Don't. Uh, why yes, you need people you. that are narrowing their range of expression too? Right. All screwed up. Believe me, every one of you. All right, Drew, what are we going to do when we come back? We're going to talk to Spencer, who's 19, girlfriend, wants to have sex, but he doesn't. Ah, he wants to get married. For very him. interesting love line twist. One, nine, one, and it's back to the phones. We go. Spencer. Yeah. You're 19. Yeah, I am. Um, I just got a question. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I guess you guys know, I had a girlfriend. She's been about a year. We've been going together. And she had previous with her, she's... Been, she was raped when she was 16, mm -hmm. and she's had a kid gave up for adoption. This was the product of the rape? What? The child was a product of the rape? Yeah, right. and she gave up for adoption. Uh, mm -hmm. That was when she was 16. She's now 20 years old. Um, and we've had, we've had, um, it's been a sexual relationship, yet it's never had sex. And I'm wondering, she's... I think Drew and I have one of those. <laughs> we just never really consummated it. <laughs> yeah. And so you mean you're doing all kinds of other stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're... I mean, I... Well, okay, last night I messed around, and mm -hmm. I came real close. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, are, you get, are you getting oral sex? Yeah. Yeah. Me me, me, and her. I mean, I'm giving her, too. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. You'll look just, back on these days one day and realize that was a better <laughs> way. It was fun. <laughs> um, and I'm just wondering what... I mean, I I want to. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind it. I'm just curious on what... What... what can you guys help me out with that? What approach should I take? Oh, she doesn't want to. 
Well, no, she does. I mean, she's she, she's been wanting to ever since we started dating. Well, so what is it you're asking us? What? What is it you're asking us exactly? I'm I'm just wondering what, I mean, what what can, should I do it or I mean, I mean, are you a virgin? Me? Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. And so I <laughs> mean, that you can always tell when guys are virgins because they go, hey. <laughs> <laughs> who are you talking yeah. to? Who? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a speaker phone, and there's uh, the guy fourth, uh, fourth from the right. Yeah, you, in the striped shirt. No, yes, you, Spencer, you're a virgin. But are you, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you guys are already gay, engaged in intimate contact. Yeah. That you need to understand, sort of historically, and I don't know if this necessarily follows biologically, but certainly historically, is something that people did after the sexual act. I mean, it sort of came beyond that. It was more intimate, and so you're already there, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's certain. I mean, there are certain precautions and things now you need to be concerned with. Wow. Well, are you I, worried about hanging on to your status as a virgin? No. Oh, well, you're not? No, I'm not. Oh, so you're just a little bit nervous I'm about the whole thing. I'm a little bit thing. nervous on, because, I mean... I understand. I've, I've never, I've never had sex, I mean... No. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course she has, I mean, there oh. you go. Right, but, um... What was that all about? Well, I mean, it was, okay... You hear that? It wasn't yeah. the rape that was just that. I mean, she's had it with previous relationships. It's right. pretty disparaging of her, though, for that. Yeah. Why? Well, guys don't like... Oh, come on. He's 19. He's a virgin. His uh, girlfriend's been with a couple of people. He normal. doesn't like that. Normal? I mean, she's a normal female. She's 20. She's being with a couple of people's normal. The problem is, is uh, Spencer being 19 and not being with anyone slightly abnormal, so he projects that onto her. She's a uh, she's a hoe and a, a <laughs> troll up this one. How many guys has she been with, you know? Oh, man. Since, since what age? What age? I mean, she's uh, been, she's, she's well, let's just take old. it in blocks from like uh, 12 to 15. She was well, with. Oh, okay. Um, what I've heard is that she's. I can approximately say six to eight. All right. That uh, that ain't a whole ton for 20. No, it's not. Okay. So that's fine. So I've been together with her for a year. All right, he, here's what we're saying. She was 19. She's been with. Stop. She's a, that's a fair number. Right? She's doing all right. I, I mean, look, she was raped by the age of 15, so we can predict that she already was a good victim for somebody. So something was already going on that she would be acting out by that age. You understand, Spencer? Yeah, I got you. I mean, there was a pretty tough family life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, the, the dad, well, the, the biological dad yeah. was, um, when she was eight, um, he, he had been married to her mom for, you know, for I don't know how long, and divorced, saying that the dad was gay. Mm. And then now she's married. Well, the, the mm. mom's married to someone else, the mm. stepdad. And All right. She, hey, Spencer. Anyways, yeah. How is this girl uh, emotionally? Mm. Um, as far as I know, she's good. I mean, they've been together a year. Been, I mean, we we All talked right. and stuff. Right. I mean, something's right. bothering her. All right. Let me uh, let me let me address this here for a second, yeah. Spencer. Uh, first off, nothing wrong with her. No. She's had a handful of partners. She's yeah. 20 years old. Um, many, and, many a woman. And, uh, and plenty of reason to have been acting out. Yeah. Tough family situations. Yeah, so. but I, I'll tell you, um, uh, uh, six, eight by uh, by the age 20, uh, not that's about right. Okay. Uh, I, you know, that's, I, that's I hate to say, 19, but that's... That's in 1970s numbers. So this is 1990s. Ugh. No, 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 no. I'm... <laughs> I, I tell you, Drew, you got to realize stuff uh, has not changed that uh, dramatically. For uh, I mean, eighteen is eighteen, and nineteen is still nineteen. And I realize there's uh, some impact in there, but there were other uh, prevailing conditions going on back when uh, too that had yeah. stuff to do. Uh, anyway, the point is, is uh, let's not hold uh, her past against her. Uh, you are doing everything with her. Just uh, slide on into the uh, next step. She'll help you along, and it's not going to be a big deal. Take the necessary Don't talk the thing into the ground. Put a condom on, and uh, it'll be fine. And, and get over your mysticism about your girlfriend. I mean, she's a person. She's had uh, trouble. She's acted out a certain way. She is a human being. She's been with other guys, and you're going to be with her. Right. Jessica. Hey. You are 20. What's going on? Yeah. Well, um... See, right now, I'm about two, about two months pregnant, and um, I've had a lot of trouble with my kidneys before. What's the problem? Um, well, I've had kidney stones mm -hmm. and um, kidney infections in mm -hmm. my right kidney, mm -hmm. and right now, my, my I, mean, I know it's my kidney that hurts because I've had it before, mm -hmm. and it's the same kidney, and I'm, I'm really concerned 
thought that because I'm pregnant. Why and didn't you? Know. Hold on, I want some. I want to do some gambling on Jessica. Uh, well, let me, just, let me finish the medical thing first, real quick. <laughs> uh, why haven't you been seen? For, oh, because my health insurance changed. When it was when I was eighteen and nineteen. No, now I you're know, pregnant. Yeah. You're pregnant. You need prenatal care. You need to understand that a urinary, even if it's just a urinary tract infection and not a kidney stone, not a kidney infection, it can increase a risk of a, of a miscarriage, spontaneous abortion. Really? Okay. You need to be seen immediately. Okay. It's a okay. good thing we had her on hold that, for 104 that, that, that minutes. Question, what else can they do for me? It's ironic that she's been on hold for, hold on, shut up, <laughs> that she's been on hold for 104 minutes and you're telling her she needs to see a doctor immediately. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not paramedics time, but it's, it, as soon as possible. What is it about your kidneys again? Um... I, 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 want, I was wondering what else they could do for me other than give me an IVP. Well, they can do an ultrasound to see if there's a stone. It doesn't matter right now. The only thing that really puts you at significant risk is infection, and that, needs, that can be checked out very easily, okay? Very easily. Okay, and the other question I was asking, would all those um, trouble with my kidney? That's not a that lot of trouble. symptomatic of kidney disease? No. Okay. That's kidney stones. It's a common thing. No big deal. Okay. Jessica. Hmm? Who got you pregnant? My boyfriend. Uh-huh. Are you glad about that? Well, I suppose. Uh-huh. Are you guys uh, together? Yes. We live together. We are. Uh, uh, we're anting up. We're anting up. The original stuff. Huh? <sighs> Jessica, we're going to do some gambling on you. On me? Yes. Okay. Getting a vibe from your voice. From my voice? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should what we... about my voice? Uh, I think we should be gambling. Would we be wrong to gamble on your past, <laughs> Jessica? I have no idea. My, my past is pretty uh-huh. weird. Okay, that's perfect. All right, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Don't go see the doctor yet. we got to gamble on you. Okay. All right, when we come back, and then we'll help you pick out a name. Okay, thanks. All right, I'm going with Zebediah, but I'm not sure it's going to be a girl yet, so I'm going to hold that. <laughs> All right, Jessica, you just hang on. We'll be back with some more uh, round two of Loveline Gambling 98 after this. How you doing? This is John Leguizamo. You're listening to Who Else But Love Line with Adam Carolla, that nut, and Dr. Drew, that, that, that frisky fella. Hey, John Leguizamo. Very talented guy. I don't know if you know that, Drew. I do. You don't follow anyone's career. No. But he's he's one of the more talented guys. He does like those I, I, one-man uh, shows yeah, where well, he does he 15 here. characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> forget about the phone number. Forget about the fax number. We're uh, moving on with the phone calls. Am I right, Drew? Yeah. Oh, oh wait. We're going back no. to gambling. Gambling. That's right. All right. Put the map away. No more playtime with the map. Who are we? Ah, yes. Uh, Jessica is uh, 20, had a question about kidney stones, uh, two months pregnant or so, living with boyfriend, and uh, sounds real spacey to me. Real spacey. Jessica? Hello? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Perfect. Hang on. All right. You go first. Uh, out of it. Um, <laughs> this could have been anything from like hitting head with a coconut, you know, <laughs> like Gilligan's Island. I, I, get, I get a real feel of uh, transiency. Like moved around a lot. To, I mean, like a Carney family or something or something, something or military or something. Yeah. Something where they're moving and chaotic, moving and moving and moving, and mm. never got hooked in with an edu- a peer group or educational system. Mm. Hmm. So dad was in the circus. Sure. With well, something. I don't know what. I can't predict what. Okay. But, uh, and, and then something else, too, like like some violence in there or something. Yeah. Let me talk to her for just a second here. Uh, Jessica? Hello? Mm hmm. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Okay. You've uh, done your fair share of drugs in your life? Not that much. Not that much? No. Hmm. Not too terribly. Mm hmm. Ever been hit by lightning? Lightning? No. No, not lightning. <laughs> All right, now, let me check off the box here. Uh huh. I wasn't dropped on my head either. They weren't dropped on your head. Was something dropped on your head? There is a difference. No. Uh, let's see.